Every day, farm workers across America leave for work early in the morning unaware of the fact that they are four times more likely to die going to and from work than on the job. Many of these fatalities are caused by train collisions. In fact, a motorist is 40 times more likely to die in a crash involving a train than in a collision with another motor vehicle. Hello, my name is Officer Ed Castaneda, the California Highway Patrol Safe Unit. Between 2000 and 2005, more than 19,000 train crossing collisions occurred in the United States, and more than 2,000 of these crashes resulted in a death. And most of these collisions were the result of drivers not knowing or not obeying the warning signs, or simply breaking the first rule of rail safety, always expect a train. Unlike cars, a train cannot swerve to avoid a collision, nor can it stop quickly. It takes an average train at least a mile to stop once the emergency brakes are applied. Weight is also a factor when trying to stop a train. An automobile traveling at 55 miles per hour can stop in about 200 feet. A tractor trailer rig at the same speed will take about 300 feet, the length of a football field. The average freight train at 55 miles per hour, on the other hand, will need a mile or more to stop. That's 18 football fields. The contact area between a train, wheel, and the rail is only three quarters of an inch wide or about the width of a dime. In contrast, motor vehicles with rubber tires riding on pavement have a greater friction area and can stop much faster. So, avoiding a collision is logically the responsibility of the motorist. You and your vehicle are no match for a train. The difference in weight ratio of a freight train to a car is about 4,000 to 1. In a collision, the heavier object will always prevail. It's like an automobile running over a 12-ounce can of pop. When a 12-million-pound freight train meets a 3,000-pound automobile, it's no contest. You should know that an oncoming train may be closer and moving faster than it appears. It is easy to misjudge a train's speed and distance from the crossing. Because of the train's size and your perspective as it comes toward you, it appears to be moving much more slowly than it actually is. If you see a train approaching, wait for it to pass before you proceed across the tracks. The best way to avoid a collision with a train is to know and follow the warning signs posted at most railroad crossings and to always expect a train. There are two types of railroad grade crossing warning devices, passive and active. The purpose of both warning signs are to alert drivers to the presence of railroad tracks and the possibility of an approaching train. Passive warning devices are not electric and consist of advanced warning signs, pavement markings, stop signs, yield signs, and cross butts. Active warning devices consist of red flashing lights on a pole or the gates, which also have bells. The advanced warning sign is the first warning sign you will see when approaching railroad tracks. It is a round yellow sign with a black X in the center and the letter R on each side. This means that you are approaching a railroad crossing. The sign is telling the driver to slow down, look, listen, and prepare to stop if a train is coming. The second sign the driver may see before reaching the tracks is a pavement marking. This sign is painted on the roadway before the track. Also painted on the roadway, at least 15 feet before the tracks, is the stop line, which shows the driver where it is safe to wait for a train to pass. The stop line has the same effect as the limit line at a stop sign. The driver must wait behind it. Directly in front of the tracks, the driver may also find a cross buck. It has two white crossed boards with the words railroad crossing. It means the same as a yield sign. The crossbuck warns a driver to yield the right of way to an approaching train. The crossbuck may be the only warning sign placed at a crossing. In such a case, the driver must be extra alert. Look both ways down the track before proceeding. When there is more than one set of tracks, there will be a sign stating the number of tracks the driver will be crossing over. This number is called a track sign. 
indicating the number of tracks at the crossing. Because of the increasing rail traffic, you should always expect to train. When there are two or more tracks, there is always the potential of another train, possibly hidden by the first, approaching on a different track. These other trains can also be coming in either direction, depending on the crossing. It is important to be very alert when crossing more than one set of tracks. Too often, when one train is passed, a driver or pedestrian will proceed not aware that another train is coming in the opposite direction. Stop signs at rail crossings mean the same as they do at highway intersections. Come to a full stop, then look and listen for a train. If you see or hear a train, do not proceed until it is safe to do so. Flashing red lights with or without bells at a railroad crossing is an active warning device. When the red lights begin to flash, the flashing lights are warning the driver to stop immediately. A train is coming. Many rail crossings are equipped with gates. When the gate comes down and the red light starts to flash, the person approaching the track crossing is required to stop immediately and not attempt to cross until the gates are raised and the lights have stopped flashing. Attempting to go around the gate that is down can have deadly consequences. If you suspect a signal is malfunctioning, look for an emergency notification number posted on or near the crossing signal or notify your local law enforcement agency. There will be a DOT number along with the emergency number. This number will designate the location of the crossing to the railroad or law enforcement. If that number cannot be located, dial 911. The major crossroads, cross streets, or highways should be given to the emergency responders. Too often farm workers use the tracks as a shortcut to their destination. Railroad tracks, trestles, yards, and equipment are private property. Walking or playing on them is illegal. Trespassers are subject to arrest and fines. Trespassers may be hit by a train and seriously injured or killed. Since 1994, more than 5,000 people have been killed while trespassing on railroads and nearby property. You cannot always hear an approaching train in time to save your life. Trains are wider than the rails themselves. Trains overhang at least three feet on each side of the rail. Loose straps hanging from freight cars may extend much further. The rail sites most dangerous for farm workers are usually located at private crossings. These crossings may not have any warning signs before the tracks. There are 94,000 private crossings in the U.S. and approximately 70% are located on farms. The farm railroad crossings are largely unmarked. No warning lights, bells, gates, or signs and require extra caution on the part of farm machinery operators. When approaching a rail crossing, farm workers should reduce or eliminate all noise in the cab so they can hear a train coming. They should also carefully look both ways because trains, while large, do not make a lot of noise. Only after ensuring that a train is not coming should the operator proceed across the tracks. It is equally important that a farm machinery operator know the length of the equipment and the load being carried. This is especially true when crossing a track that has limited space between the rail and the point at which the driver must stop on the far side of the track. The area between the far side of the track and the point at which a driver must stop is called the storage or containment area. It is important to know how much space there is on the other side of the tracks and take into account whether the space is empty or if other vehicles will also be occupying some of that space. The tragic school bus collision at Fox River Grove in Illinois proved conclusively that this knowledge can make the difference between life and death. When the driver does not have enough room to completely clear the track, a disaster is waiting to happen. To avoid stalling when crossing railroad tracks, do not change gears if you are driving a standard transmission. If for whatever reason your equipment or vehicle gets stuck on a track, Immediately get everyone out of the vehicle and far away from the tracks. Do not attempt to move the vehicle. Leave the vehicle and run toward the oncoming train at a 45 degree angle. Many people try to exit the vehicle 
by running in the same direction as the oncoming train. When the train hits the vehicle, debris from the collision can cause injury or death to the vehicle's occupants. Two ways to avoid getting your equipment or vehicle stuck on a railroad crossing are to make sure that any towed equipment does not become unhitched while crossing the track and that low slung equipment has enough room to clear the track. Failure to judge correctly could cost you your life. Remember, if you are a pedestrian and need to cross the tracks, the only safe place to do it is at a designated public crossing. If you cross at any other place, you not only threaten your life and limb, but you are also trespassing and can be ticketed or cited. And whether you're driving or walking, if you come to a crossing and see flashing red lights, don't ignore them, stop. These lights signal the approach of a train. Never walk or drive past flashing lights or around lower gates at a crossing. Wait until the lights have stopped flashing and the gates are lifted completely. Your family depends on you being safe during the day so that you can return safely to them at night. Be there for them. Always expect a train.